Today, I'm going to be showing you how to make documents the Unix way with Groff. And for those of you who don't know what Groff is, Groff is a document compilation system or document compiler uh, and formatting system, kind of like LaTeX, except Groff is bundled with most Unix systems by default or some variation of Groff. Um, but yeah, if you're using Linux or BSD or anything like that, chances are it's built in. And today what I'm mostly going to be focusing on is the Groff. Uh, there's lots of different macros for Groff. And today I'm going to be mostly focusing on the MS macros, which in my opinion are the simplest macros as well as the easiest ones to learn. And I think they're, they apply to most situations. Uh, and for those of you who don't know macros, macros are just, you know, the, command, the commands you use to format a document and tell it what to do. So I'm going to actually show you uh, how to use the MS macros for Groff. And of course, if you always want to check the man page, you can just pull that up. It's pretty simple. But let's actually, I'm going to actually show you how to use the MS macros. So I'm going to make a new document. Let's call it example.ms. And let's put a few macros in there. So I'm going to do tl, .tl for title. And basically what macros are is it's a dot at the very beginning to indicate that's a macro, and then the title of the macro in all caps. In this case, it's TL. And let's give the title example document. Okay. And let's have AU for author. And I'll put my name there. And let's just add a paragraph. So let's do dot PP for paragraph. And I'm just going to say this is a normal paragraph. There we go. And there's our example document. And the reason, of course, the, um, the text you want to actually put in the, uh, in the macro comes below it. There's obviously uh, reasons for that. It's mostly just to be able to format your documents way neater and be able to find it, find things faster. But let's actually go ahead and compile this document into a viewable file. So I'm going to go ahead and quit. And as you can see, we have our example.ms. And so if you want to turn that into a PDF file or a PostScript file or anything of the sort, what we have to do is we have to run the graph command. Or if you using any variation of graph, you can do, you know, the command for that. Graph and then the file name and then give it the dash ms argument to tell it that you want to use ms macros. And then now we want to tell it what we want to output it to. So we can do dash t and then give it what we want to output to, in this case, a PDF. And if we, if we run it like that, it'll just spit out the PDF to the terminal. And we don't, of course we don't want that. So go ahead and put it into a file, do example.pdf. And as you can see, that was pretty quick. Uh, but let's go ahead and view it. And there we go. There's our example, example document written in Groff. So let's go ahead and add some things into this. Because, of course, there's more than just titles, authors, and paragraphs in Groff. There's a lot more to offer. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Uh, let's go ahead and add a uh, an author institution, .ai is author institution and if you if uh, you don't know what this is then you probably don't have to worry about it but basically if you're writing a paper for a university or some sort of organization you usually put the organization or university in here in this case I don't have one so I'm gonna put down I don't know personal there we go and let's go ahead and add uh, oh let's go ahead and add uh, headers that's one thing that Graph has is, of course, headers. So I'm going to go ahead and do dot an H for numbered header, and of course this will have this will give me a numbered header. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is a numbered header. And let's actually go ahead and recompile that. So here we go. And as you can see, now we have our author institution and our numbered header. 
And so actually, let me just go ahead and open a new terminal over here. So let's go ahead and add a few more things to while we're at it. Um, of course, if you don't want a numbered header, you can go ahead and add a non-numbered header. If you want to do .sh, you can go ahead and add a non-numbered header. So let's do this is a non-numbered header. Oh. Here, go ahead and put in the graph command again. PDF and example.pdf. And there we go. There's our non-numbered header. So of course we can go ahead and add more. Um, of course, there's none. There's numbered headers and non-numbered headers. There's also you can also add abstracts while you're at it. So let's go ahead and add an abstract. And this one's a little bit different. This one is dot a b oh a b for abstract begin, and then dot a e for abstract end. And basically, inside of these two macros, you're going to put your abstract. So I'm just going to say this is an example abstract and there we go there's our abstract so we can go ahead and add more things too like for example we can we can also add more uh, different types of paragraphs too so dot lp will give us an un unindented or left aligned paragraph so say this is a non indented left line paragraph. And there we go, there's our non indented paragraph. And of course let's let's go ahead and add a few more things too. Um, let's go ahead and add a footnote. To do that, we can just do, it works the same thing, or footnotes work the same way as abstracts. So you can do .fs for footnote start, and then we can put our footnote in there. Say this is a footnote. Pretty nice. And then .fe for footnote end. And then we can go ahead and recompile that. And there's our tiny little footnote in the corner. And I, I feel like adding, uh, I feel like adding a bit of emphasis to my document. So let's let's actually add some italics to. Uh, let's add italics right here to normal. So to do that, let me let me go ahead and separate normal from the rest of the doc rest of the documents. There we go. So to do that, what you have to do is you have to do the dot. I for italics. And the interesting thing about dot I and a few other commands too is that you don't actually put the text that you want to italicize below it. You actually give it as an argument for the macro, which is a it's a bit different. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you'll it'll be muscle memory after a while. So it's just a weird quirk that it has, but you can go ahead and recompile it. And as you can see, it's kind of noticeable. It's you can see that the word normal is italicized, and of course you can. There's not just italics. You can also I'm going to go ahead and add bold text to paragraph, so you can do, do dot b to bold, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. And as you can see, paragraph is now bold, and graph also has a way to box text as well. So let's go down here. And let's add, oh, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. And let's add a box around the word non indented. So you can do dot bx for box. And as you can see, now non indented has a box around it. And there's one interesting, um, I don't say quirk, but thing that Graph does. If I wanted to italicize multiple words, if I do, if I want to, let's say, 
let's just say I want to I want to add a word of normal. Uh, let's say this is a normal average paragraph. If I want to italicize normal and average, let's actually see what happens if I have two separate words. I'm going to go ahead and compile it. And as you can see, this weird thing happens. Not only does it not italicize the word average, but it it puts it together with no space, which is weird. And the reason this happens is because, like I said earlier, uh, the I, I, italics macro and the bold macro and the box macro, they take arguments. They don't, the text doesn't go underneath the macro. And so in order to keep it as one argument, you actually have to go ahead and add quotation marks around what you want to italicize. And I'll treat it as one phrase to italicize. So let's go ahead and recompile that. And now you can see it works normally now. It's this is a normal average paragraph. And of course, normal and average are italicized. So that's good. And there's also a few other neat things that Groff can do, or the MS macros can do. So I'm going to go ahead and add a indented paragraph. And to do that, you can do dot .pyp. And I can say this is an in Dented paragraph. And of course, when I mean indented, it's not the first line that's indented, it's the entire paragraph that's indented. Uh, let, me add, just, let me just add some like, random text, like, uh, there we go. And let's see what it gives us. And although, although it hasn't wrapped around yet, so let me, let me add some more text and see what it gives us. There you go. And as, as you can see, it's the entire paragraph is indented, not just the first line. And one thing you actually do with uh, .ip, indented paragraph, is you can actually create sort of bulleted and numbered lists. So I'll actually show you how to do that. So if I do .ip and give it, I'll say this is list item one, and I'll do another one. Say this is oh, oops, this is list item two. Let's go ahead and compile that. You can see that kind of resembles a list, although it's missing the bullet points or uh, in this or in some cases numbers or anything of the sort. So you can actually go ahead and add those. So, in order to add a sort of bullet point, what we can do is you can give it an argument, and this will, an argument to indent the paragraph, and it'll actually add a bullet point. So we can do slash bu, or yeah, backslash, and then open bracket bu. And that is actually the escape command for a bullet point. And we can go ahead and add that as well, slash you and now you can see we actually have bullet points on our list and of course if you want to not have bullet points for example if I want a numbered list I can just do one and then two and then you could have a numbered list like this and so uh, let's just say I also want to add a a, ooh, a cover page to my document because a lot of all papers that some people have to write, of course, have cover pages. So in order to do that, at the very top of your document, you can go ahead and do dot rp for report. And what this will do is at the very yeah, very beginning of your document, it will print a cover page or report page. And let's go ahead and recompile that. And as you can see, now we just now we have more than one page, and this is our uh, report page or title page with our title, uh, the author name, the author institution, the abstract, and the current date today, which is March 21st. And so that's that's the basics of Graph, or at least the MS macros. There are more macros, uh, to be honest. It's and those uh, the macros out there for Graph can do a lot, like. There's MS macros, which I just showed you. There's 
uh, EQN or equation macros, which you can use to write mathematical equations. There's PIC macros, which you can use to draw pictures. You can you can do a lot more things with Graph. This is just the basics, but yeah, that's that's Graph. I will see you whenever.